Hello learners, I am Parikshit and welcome to a very exciting session on Unacademic Catalyst. In today's session, we are going to solve a very interesting previous year LREI caselet. Caselet on pouches and coins. A very interesting one which has appeared in the previous year papers and today we are going to discuss the sets in details. Let's get started. So this is me, your educator on the platform with the highest life class rating, thanks to my learners. A lot of happenings on our academy in the next few days. A lot of new batches are starting. The 23rd of June, a VRC expert batch. Another batch, the percentile batch, also starts on the 23rd. And then on the 26th, we have a practice drill for the CAT 2021 batch. Now remember, if you wish to subscribe to any of these batches, you got to enroll either to Iconic Cat subscription or to Our Academy Plus subscription. And for that, remember to use the code PARIKSHITLIFE, which is there on your screen. It will get you the maximum discounts. Okay, let's get started with the case lid. Fine, let's look at the case lid, okay? This is from the CAT 2019 paper. Okay, three pouches, each represented, let's do it together, you can hear me out and I think it will be very easy if you follow me, okay? Three pouches, each represented by a filled circle, are kept in each of the nine slots in a tray to tray grid, as shown in the figure. Every pouch has a certain number of one rupee coins. The minimum and maximum amount of money in rupees among the three pouches in each of the nine slots are given in the table. Fine. So if you look at it, right? So what do they say? They say the minimum and the maximum amount of money, okay? Among the three pouches are given in the table. Are given in the table. Now look at it. Let's look at it. You see here, every cell, there are three pouches. Every cell, there are three pouches, correct? Now they say among the three pouches, what do they have? they have certain number of one rupee coins. So the first pouch, so you see this, the first pouch, it will have some one rupee coins. How many one rupee coins? We don't know. That's what we need to determine. Second pouch, another one rupee coin. Some one rupee coins. How many one rupee coins? We don't know. That's what we need to determine. And so on for each of the pouches. Now, you know what? There are three pouches in each cell. There are three pouches in each cell, correct? Three pouches in each cell. Now, if you look at the corresponding adjacent diagram, what do they say? Let's read the example. For example, we know that among the three pouches kept in the second column of the first row. Let's try to locate it. Column two, row one. Column two, row one is this. The minimum amount in the pouch is rupees six and the maximum amount is rupees eight. So can you see six and eight? So what is six? Six is the minimum amount and eight is the maximum amount. It means, remember column two, row one. So one of the pouches has got six, one of the pouches has got eight, and this is the minimum and the maximum. So what about the third pouch? The third pouch, which is unknown, will lie between the mean and the max, right? So it means the third pouch can either be six or seven or eight. Think about it. Obviously, it has to lie between the mean and the max, right? So it can be six, seven, or eight. So I hope you understand what is given in the question. Let's try to understand one more the number, one more cell. Let's say column three, row three. What is mean? Two. What is the max amount? Five. So can you see? This is two, okay, that's the minimum amount. This is five, that's the maximum amount. So what about the third pouch? The third pouch will have some number which will lie between the mean and the max. It means, this third pouch that you see here, right, this is not given to you. And probably the question is all about finding out this unknown, right? So what is this unknown? It can be 2, it can be 3, it can be 4, or it can be 5. Remember, it will vary between the mean and the max. So likewise, every cell, the mean and the max has been given, and the third number is unknown. That obviously will vary between the mean and the max, correct? So if you understand this, you are almost 30% done with the case set. 30% you are done with the case set if you are able to understand this much. Let's continue. There are nine pouches in any of the three columns as well as in any of the three rows. It is known that the average amount of money in rupees 
kept in the nine pouches in any column or any row is an integer. Now, this is very important, probably the most important line. So, let's wrap the previous part. Let's, I, let's not underline the previous part. Let me underline the most important part of the case, there, right? What is the most important part? It is known that the average amount of money, okay, kept in the nine pouches in any column or in any row is an integer. What is the meaning of integer? Integer means not a fraction, not a decimal. So you know what? If you are to add up the numbers, right? If you have to add up the numbers row wise, something like this. Remember there are nine numbers like this. Six of them are visible. Three of them are not given to you. So total nine numbers across any row. So you know what? The average will be an integer. Average will be an integer. What do you mean by average, by the way? If you are able to visualize, can I say average is equal to total divided by number of observations. Total divided by number of observations. Remember, across every row or across every column, there are nine numbers. Nine. Six of them are given and three of them are unknown. So total nine numbers. So can I say the average will be an integer, meaning not a fraction if this part total is divisible by nine. Think about it. If your total is divisible by 9, what will happen? 9, let's say 81. 81 will be perfectly divisible by 9 and you will not get it. You will not get a decimal. Similarly, if you have 72, 72 is the total. 72 divided by 9 will be perfectly divisible and you will not have a decimal, right? So can I say for the average to be an integer, the total has to be an integer. The total has to be an integer, right? Total of what? Total across every row like this and total across every column like this has to be an integer. I hope you follow this. I hope you follow this. Correct? Fine. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. Next. It is also known that the total amount of money kept in the three pouches in the first column of the third row is rupees 4. Kept in the three pouches in the first column of the third row is rupees 4. First column, okay, of the third row is rupees 4. Now think about it. Total, they say, is 4. Remember, so one of them is 1, one of them is 1, another number is 2, another number is 2, total is 4. So can I say the third one has to be 2? The third one has to be 1, sorry, the third one has to be 1. Yes, only then the total will be 4, right? So can I put this one? The third one has to be 1. Third one has to be 1. Fine. This much is given to you. This much is given to you. And you also know that the total across any column or across any row also has to be a multiple of 9. Otherwise, the average will not be an integer. I hope you understand this part of the case. So now we are almost done. It's, it's about doing the manual work. The idea, the concept behind it, you have taken it, right? So probably you did 5 minutes, 6 minutes in an examination under the actual exam conditions. You probably will take 5-6 minutes to determine this much. If you determine this much, the remaining part of it will be easy because now you know how to solve it. Correct? Let's start. Now before I start finding out the sum, look at row 2 and column 2. I think it's very easy to determine. You know what? Row 2, column 2, they say the mean is 1 and the max is 1. And the max is 1. So one of the numbers is 1. Another number is 1 and this is the mean to max, right? So can I say the third number which will lie between the mean to and max will also be 1. Will also be 1. Why? Because one of them is mean, one of them is max. The unknown number has to lie between mean and max. That will also be 1. That will also be 1. Correct? Fine. So I hope you understand this part of the case. Up till here, we are clear. Now let's let's proceed. Let's proceed further. Okay, let's proceed further. Can we do the additions? Can we do the additions for row 1? Row, column 1, column 1. Let's try to add up the numbers for column 1. Okay? Can you please add up? 2 plus 4, 6. 6 plus 3, 9. 9 plus 5, 14. 14 plus 1, uh, 9, 6, 9, 14, 15, 17, 18. 18. Till now, the sum is 18. Including this one, the sum is 18. Let's say the unknown numbers are A and B. Let's say this is A, this is B. So can I say the sum will be 18 plus A plus B? Will you agree? 18 plus A plus B. And this has to be divided by 9 because you need to determine the average. You need to determine the average. 
So 18 divided by A plus B, this will be the average. Now, can I say for the average to be an integer, this numerator has to be a multiple of 9. The numerator has to be a multiple of 9. So think about it. What can be the numerator? What can be the numerator? Think about it. Can the numerator be 18? Think about it. Can the numerator be 18? If the numerator is 18, A and B are 0 and 0. A and B are 0 and 0. Now let's think about it. You know what? If A is 0, can A be 0? A cannot be 0. Why? Because if A is 0, A will lie outside the range. What is the range? The range is 2 to 4. The range is 2 to 4. If you put take A as 0, obviously 0 is not possible because in that case, A will be lying outside the range of 2 comma 4, right? So 0 comma 0 is definitely not possible. What is the next possible value? What is the next possible value? <laughs> Remember, the numerator got to be a multiple of 9. So the next possible multiple of 9 could be 27. 27, right? If the numerator is 27, I will say A plus B has to be 9. Why? 18 plus 9 is 27. So what are the possible values? I think there is only one possible value, 4 and 5. 4 and 5. Why only 4 and 5? Think about it. If you take A as 4, you know what? 4 lies in the range of 2 to 4. Can you see? If you take A as 4, A will be 4 and 4 will lie in the range 2 to 4. If you take B as 5, you know what? B will lie in the range 3 to 5. B will lie in the range 3 to 5. Correct? So 4 and 5 is possible. Can you take A and B to any other numbers? Any other numbers? Remember, A and B has to be 9 because the numerator is 27. If the numerator is 27, A and B has to be 9. But think about it. In case anyone doesn't understand, let's proceed further. A plus B has to be 9. So the possibilities are 1, 8, 2, 7, 3, 6, 4, 5, 5, 4, 6, 3, 7, 2, 8, 1. Correct? Think about it. Can A be 1? A cannot be 1 because in that case, it will lie outside the range 2 to 4. Impossible. Can A be 2? A cannot be 2 because A can be 2. A can definitely be 2 because it is in the range. But what about B? Can B be 7? No. Because if B is 7, it is outside the range of 3 comma 5. So 7 is also not possible. Similarly, can A be 3 and B be 6? No. B cannot be 6. Why? Remember the range is 3 to 5. The range is 3 to 5. So any number outside the range is not possible for B. 4 and 5? Definitely possible. Both are in the range. 5 and 4? Not possible. Why? Because if you take 5 and 4, A is 5. That will be outside the range of 2 to 4. What about next one? 6 comma 3. A is 6. So if A is 6, again outside the range. Remember the range of A is 2 comma 4. Outside the range. 7, impossible. Outside the range. A is 8, impossible. Outside the range. So the only possible value is A is 4, B is 5. A is 4, B is 5. I hope you understand. I hope you understand how much is A. A is 4, B is 5. <coughs> Correct? I hope we are clear with this. I hope we are clear with this. Fine. Let's go to the next one. Let's con consider the next column. The next column. Fine. Okay. Let's add up this column. Let's add up this column. Can you tell me how much it is? 6 plus 8, 14. 14 plus 3, 17. 18, 20. This is 20 till now, right? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20. Let's say this is C. This is D. Okay. So you know what? Average cannot be a fraction. Average has to be an integer. For average to be an integer, you know what? The sum, which is the sum? 20 plus C plus D. 20 plus C plus D must be a multiple of 9. Correct? 20 plus C plus D must be a multiple of 9. Now, what is the nearest multiple? 27. 27. If the numerator has to be 27, can I say C plus D has to be 7? C plus D has to be 7. Correct? Think about it. If C plus D is 7, what are the possibilities? What are the possibilities? It can be 1, 6. It can be 2, 5. It can be 3, 4. It can be 4, 3. It can be 5, 2. It can be 6, 1. Let's check. Let's check. Can C be 1? C cannot be 1 for the simple reason the range of C is 6 to 8. 1 will be outside the range. So 1 to 6, impossible. 
can C be two? Same reason. Two cannot be C because C lies in the range of six to eight. That's outside the range. Can C be three? Impossible again. The minimum value of C can be six. Three is not possible. Four is not possible. Five is not possible. Can it be six and one? Absolutely. Why? If you take C as six, you know what? Six lies in the range of six to eight. Can D be one? Absolutely. D lies in the range of one to two. One to two. So perfect. You got the values. What are the values of C and D? Six comma one. Six comma one. So what are the values of C and D? C and D is six and one. Six and one. This was anyway one. This was anyway one. Got it? I think we are clear. <clears throat> I think we are clear. Similarly, let's go to the last column. Let's try out the last column. Fine. Last column, if you look at it, there are three unknowns. There are many ways of solving it. There are three unknowns. But if you look at horizontally, I think it will be easy. Look at horizontally. I think it will be easy, right? Remember, the sum of every row is also an integer. Every row, right? Average of every row. Sorry, not the sum. Average of every row is also an integer. What is the average of the first row? Can you calculate the sum? 2 plus 4, 6, 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 6, 16, plus 8. 24 plus 6, 30, 31, 34, 34. So A plus total sum is 34. And let's say this is unknown. Let's say this is unknown. Let's call the unknown as A. Is it 34? 8, 10, 16, 22, 30, 31, 34. 34 plus A. 34 plus A is the sum of the first row. Remember, remember, you know what you need to remember? The sum of every row has to be divisible by 9. Only then the average will be an integer. Remember the question clearly says average of every row and every column is an integer. What is an integer? It cannot be a fraction. So it means if the numerator has to be divisible by 9, only then it will be an integer. And for it to be divisible by 9, the only possible value is 2. Can it be 45? Can the numerator be 45? Think about it. If you think the numerator is 45, in that case A is 11. But 11 is not possible. Why? Because A lies in the range of 1 to 3. A lies in the range of 1 to 3. So any number greater than 3 or lesser than 1 is not possible. So only number possible is 2. Only number possible is 2. Hence the value of A is 2. Hence the value of A is how much? 2. Hence the value of A is 2. I hope you follow this. I hope you follow this. Similarly, let's come to the last row. We'll go back to the second row. Okay, let's come to the last row. That's an easy one. Similarly, let's try to calculate the average of the last row. What is the average of the last row? Sum divided by 9. Why there are 9 numbers? Let's see. 1 plus 2 plus 1, 4. 4 plus 1, 5. 5 plus 2, 7. 7 plus 1, 8. 8 plus 2, 10. 10 plus 5, 15. 15 plus, let's say, x. This unknown is, let's say, x. So, 15 plus x has to be divisible by 9. Again, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 15. 15 plus x divided by 9. This has to be an integer. For this to be an integer, the numerator got to be divisible by 9. So what are the possible values of x? x can, numerator can be 18. If the numerator is 18, x is 3. If the numerator is 27, remember it got to be divisible by 9. In that case, x is 12. But 12 is not possible. Why? Remember, x lies in the range of 2 to 5. So any number lesser than 2 and greater than 5 is not possible. Hence, the only possible value is x is 3. Hence, the only possible value is x is 3. x is 3. Correct? So this is 3. Right? I hope you understand this. And row 2. Row 2. Similarly, let's find the sum for row 2. Let's find the sum for row 2. Okay. Again. What is average? Sum divided by 9. What is the sum? 3 plus 5, 8. 8 plus 5, 13. 14, 15, 16. 22, 42. 42 plus, let's say, y. Plus, let's say, y has to be divisible by 9. Has to be divisible by 9. Correct? What is the value of y? Think about it. 42 plus y has to be divisible by 9. That means, y can be, the numerator can be 45. 45 means, y is 3. Or the numerator can be 54 because 54 is also divisible by 9. In that case, the numerator is y is 12. Or the numerator can also be 63 because 63 is also divisible by 9. In that case, the numerator is 21. Dot, dot, dot. Multiple possibilities. But let's check which among them is possible. Right? Let's see. Can y be 3? 
Y cannot be 3. Why? If you take Y astray, it will lie outside the range. Can you see the range? The range of Y is 6 to 20. So any number less than 6 and greater than 20 is not possible. And you know what? 3 is greater than 6. Impossible. It cannot be 3. Can it be 12? Definitely it can be 12. Why? Because if you take Y as 12, 12 lies between 6 to 20. 12 lies between 6 to 20. So 12 is possible. Can it be 21? 21 is also not possible because it is outside the range of 6 to 20. So only possible value of Y is 12. Only possible value of Y is 12. Correct? Only possible value of Y is 12. And you are done. Ready to get 9 marks in CAP 2019. In CAP 2019. It's a beautiful question. Not a difficult one. Based on a simple concept that the average will be an integer if the sum of the numbers is divisible by 9. Is divisible by 9. Why 9? Because there are 9 numbers across any row or across any column. Fine. Let's look at the questions. Let's look at the questions now. What is the total amount of money kept in the three in the three pouches kept in first column of second row? Column 1, row 2. Column 1, row 2. How much it is? 3 plus 5 plus 5. 5, right? 13. Answer is 13. How many pouches contain exactly one coin? Remember, these are all 1 rupee coins. Every pouch has a certain number of 1 rupee coins. Meaning, if this one is 2, 2, it indicates there are 2 1 rupee coins. So, that the sum is 2. Here, if it is 4, it indicates there are 4 1 rupee coins. So, the sum is 4. Now, they are asking exactly 1 coin. How many 1 coins? How many pouches contain exactly 1 coin, right? Exactly 1 coin would be how much? How much? This is 1. How, how, how much, right? Count. So, this is 1. So, let's remove the other part so that you don't get confused. With, you don't get confused. Fine. Okay. Exactly 1 coin. So, this is 1. Fine. Then, this is 2. This is another pouch. Third pouch. Fourth pouch. Fifth pouch. Sixth pouch. Seventh pouch. And how many pouch? This is 8. So, basically, they are asking how many ones are there? How many ones are there? 8 of them. 8 of them. So, your answer is 8. Next. The number of slots, okay, so let's rub this, let's rub this blue part, okay. The number of slots, okay, the number of slots for which the total amount in the three pouches strictly exceeds 10, strictly exceeds 10, okay, let's start counting. First one, 2 plus 4 plus 4 is exactly 10, 2 plus 4 plus 4 is exactly 10, they want more than 10, this is not the case. 3 plus 5 plus 5, this is greater than 10, greater than 10. 1 plus 2 plus 1, less than 10. That's not the case. 6 plus 8 plus 6, this is also greater than 10, right? The sum should be greater than 10. 1 plus 1, no. 1, 2, 1, no. 1, 3, 2, no. 6, 20, 12. Even this is greater than 10. So, how many of them? 6, 20, 12. This one, 6, 8, 6 is greater than 10. And 3, 5, 5. This sum is also greater than 10. How many of them? 3. How many of them? Beautiful case in the cat and if you have followed me, if you have looked at the entire video, I don't see a reason why you won't understand. Please practice this case sir. It's a beautiful one. You never know. Sometimes the same case that might appear again in your exam. So do practice it well so that you master the concepts behind it. Remember? The, remember the concept. What was the concept? Average will be distinct, will be an integer only if the sum of the numbers is divisible by 9. Why 9? Because there were 9 numbers across every row or across every column. Okay, a quick announcement. If you are not an Unacademy Plus student, right, you are missing a lot of things. So what happens is every morning on Unacademy Plus, okay, every morning on Unacademy Plus, Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday, morning 7.45 a.m. to 8.45 a.m., we do, we practice LRDI, we practice LRDI, comprehensive set A to Z, A to Z. 7.45 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. live and this will continue till the cap. And the best part is whoever are members of Unacademy Plus, apart from the live classes, you get over 200 hours of practice materials. Over 200 hours of practice materials with video solution. With video solution. Let's say you are very poor in LR, you want to start LR from the very basics. You know what? 
you are going to start from LR foundations, the foundations practice material. There are a lot of videos, 16 hours of videos are there, which I have created only for you so that your foundations are clear regarding LR. Moment the foundations are clear, you want to talk more about LR concepts. What will you do? You will go to my LR sequence to name of the courses, concept builder course. 14 hours of videos are available where you will solve simple questions based on simple LR concepts. Moment the foundations and the concepts are in place, next you are going to apply them. So what will you do? You will go to sequence 3. Sequence 3, the name of the course is practice course for LRDI. 13 hours. In this way, I have developed more than 200 hours, to be precise, 220 hours of practice materials. Same goes with DI. Same goes with DI. Right? And all of this you will get access only and only if you join an Academy Plus. The best part about joining Plus is, if you join Plus using the code Parikshit Live, right? What will happen? You get a 10% discount on the subscription fee. That's benefit one. 10% discount. Benefit two, there is a bumper offer running at this point of time. The bumper offer is, if you join us for just six months. Why six months? Because the cat is due in the next six months. You join us for just six months and we in our academy are going to extend your subscription by one month absolutely free. Why are we doing that? Because if we extend the subscription post your CAT exam, you get free access to the NMAT, ZAP, SNAP, IIFT, Maharashtra CET classes that we conduct exclusively for these exams. You will get free access, okay? That's the second benefit. Third benefit, you know what? If you join PLUS using the code Parikshit Live, you will get free mentorship. I repeat, free mentorship. And free mentorship is available only on this code Parikshit Live. What is mentorship? Mentorship is all about going beyond the class hours. Anytime you have doubt beyond the class hours when you're practicing at home, when you're trying to solve a math paper, mock paper, probably trying to do some case lists from the book, anytime you have a doubt and if you have joined an academy using the code Parikshit Live, I am there to help you even beyond your class hours, right? But for that, you need to join using this code. So once you join using this code, I get a notification with your name and your details and immediately I become your mentor for this entire CAT 2021 journey. Fine? And a lot of students often ask me, if I join using your code, do I get access to only your classes? No, you don't get access to only my classes. You will get access to an academy plus and you get access to all educators using my code Parikshit Live. All educators, be it verbal, quants or LRDI. That's it for today. A quick thing that if you are a BBA or an MBA or a hotel management aspirant, there are a lot of courses for you. You can enroll to them using my code Parikshit Live for discounts. And yes, do enroll for the scholarship test on an academy. It will help you to know where you stand in the competition today. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the session and I'm going to see you in my next session. Till then, goodbye and stay safe.